video on. Yes, I think we can start. Hi, everyone. Um, before I introduce who we have here today, um, I just want to introduce the Early Birds Club, uh, the Early Birds Kids Club um, to any parents or just anyone watching this. Um, so the Early Birds Kids is a fun space for kids aged 5 to 11, where they get to come together, participate in inspiring activities, um, and encourage each other to wake up early as they get to grow and evolve into purposeful future citizens of the world. Um, and if you're watching, if, and if you're watching this, and you're a parent uh, of a kid aged five to eleven, or a teen anywhere from twelve to nineteen, um, I really encourage you to to join these clubs. I'm I'm a member, and it's it's been a really really fulfilling experience. Um, we also have interesting programs, workshops, fun activities, uplifting discussions, motivational talks on various subjects, and you'll get to meet interesting dignitaries from various walks of life. Um, these are these are going to be curated by parents and youth volunteers. Do um, reach out if you'd like us to have more information on this or any other matter re related to the benefits of waking up early. Alternatively, you can also email info at earlybirdsclub.org, which I think will like link down somewhere if possible. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and introduce who's here. So Johanna graduated in the field of psychology. Uh, but following her passion in teaching children, she's been focused in the field of education. She was involved in, in, in the helping study school in Bali, Indonesia, that is based on Vedanta. Other than being in, involved in teaching young minds, she also loves storytelling. Uh, she's been telling stories in schools and public libraries. She, she also took part in the storytelling festival at the National Library last year. Um, and without further ado, I'll pass it on to Johanna. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Neeraj. Um, happy to be here. Thank you, everybody. Uh, how are you all? Hi, uh, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Nice, nice to know that. Uh, so, Good. you are all in the different places, is it? Hi. In, uh, in yes. which country are you from? I'm from, oh, um, well, I'm from India, but I live in Australia. Okay, so now you're in Australia or India? Um, I'm in Australia right now, but I'm from India. Okay. How about uh, Yan? Where are you now? Yajan Gupta? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, where are you now? India, is it? Or Singapore? Pune. Pune, okay. So, okay, uh, okay. Now, uh, let's just uh, start with a simple game first, because we um went to listen some stories, right? You like to listen some stories today, and so we are going to like exercise our imagination. So before that, can you all hear me clearly? Yes. Okay. Um. So. Um, let's start with uh, imagining in my hand there is a small ball, a small tiny ball. What color would you like it to be? You can on your uh, audio and uh, answer me. Like what, what kind of color do you think? Pink? Baby blue. Baby blue, pink. I might, I might want it maybe like um silver. Silver. Okay, Egg. that's quite interesting also. Um. Okay, maybe let's try with blue first. A blue tiny ball here. Okay. Just use your imagination and imagine that there is a ball here between my two fingers. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to throw to this ball to you. I'll tell. Who will I throw it to? Okay, so with your imagination, you should catch the ball, okay? Same 
try it, okay? Understand? Are you ready? Let's try it, okay? Okay, I'm going to throw it to Kalina. Okay, yes. Very good, Kalina. Okay, can you throw it back to me? Yes. Okay, here we are. Okay, now I'm going to throw it to uh, Anand Sankaran. Ready? Wow, so fast. It was just like a speed of light. Can you throw it back to me, please? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Okay, you throw it back to me. Okay, so now you're expert on that. Now we are going to try something else. This is a, a even a, a bigger kind of imagination. So this small tiny blue ball can change shape. So when you receive it, it will change into whatever shape you would like to to, uh, to make it right okay are you ready i am now going to throw to um mother are you ready mother is your name mother or kanak um, no my name is kanak kanak okay kanak are you ready so you can you can yeah. when you catch it it can like become very big or it can become medium or become very tiny up to you okay Okay. okay, here you go. <laughs> Whoa, okay, good. <laughs> so, uh, now can you throw it back, back to me? Throw the ball back to me. Oh, okay, wow, it becomes so big like this. I'm going to throw to Yajan. Yajan, are you ready, Yajan Gupta? One, two. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Okay, well done. It's the same size, right? Okay, throw it back to me. Wow, now it becomes so tiny. So very, very tiny. Okay, let me throw to, uh, is it Kashi or Arjuna? Kashi? He's Arjuna. Arjuna, okay. Okay, let me... um. Throw to Ajna, okay? Ajna, are you ready? This is a very tiny, very tiny, tiny, tiny one. I will just blow it. Catch it! Oh, okay, you got the tiny one too. Okay, good. Can you throw it back to me? Okay, now it becomes this, this size. Okay, let's just make it disappear. So the ball. Has disappeared. So, so are you ready now with your imagination? Yes. Okay, let's start the story. I'm going to tell a story about this very powerful king and his son. So, if you have um, given given a, a boon or a gift, like a special gift, like what kind of superpower would you like to have? I want to have like a rainbow power, like to turn stuff into rainbow. Turn stuff into rainbow. Wow, that's going to be very beautiful. World well, full of rainbows. Yes? Anand Sankara? I would like to have power of earth so I can control the earth. Control the earth. Wow. And then you can make all the vegetables grow very nicely. <laughs> and who else would like to say? What kind of? Um, I might have the power of light and like um making fun, sort of. <laughs> making everything become fun. Is it? Yeah. Okay, that's nice. That's nice. And oh, no. like oh, flying, okay. making everything. Okay, that's great. Anyone else? Maybe Niranjan, you want to say something? Like what kind of superpower you like to have? I like to have. I like to be really fast. At oh, okay. I work. Like become very fast, is it? And doing my work. And doing your work. Okay. Wow. 
and also maybe you can run very fast like that and and do so many other things like that super fast yeah okay so this king this powerful king he also wanted a super power so what he did was he prayed he prayed to lord brahma do you know lord brahma so he created this universe lord brahma is the one who created this universe so he prayed and he asked so that uh, so he prayed so hard like so so hard like a lot of austerity so and then lord brahma came the brahma is uh, uh, came and he was very pleased with his prayers and meditation and he said okay uh, this king name is hiranyakashipu so hiranyakashipu tell me what is it that you want that you pray so hard oh lord brahma i want to be immortal do you know what is immortal immortal means cannot be killed i know what it means um yeah? it means like you live it means you live forever yes you live forever you cannot die right you won't die and lord lord brahma said oh i don't have that kind of power i cannot make you immortal so this wicked king he is thinking what he is so cunning so he said okay why don't you grant me this uh special gift that i cannot be killed by any weapon i cannot be killed in the morning i cannot be killed in the afternoon i cannot be killed at night and also i cannot be killed inside the building or outside the building so he makes all this condition and he also said i cannot be killed by any animal i cannot be killed by human i cannot be killed by any deva so in this way it is almost like killed by anything right so he is so cunning that he made such a, a wish but lord brahma granted his wish so what happened next he became very very powerful he conquered the whole universe everybody was scared of him just hearing his name they all trembled viranyakashipu even the strong devatas they all were scared of him so the the devatas all are planning what to do and one day when hiranyakashipu was not in his kingdom they all went and attacked his kingdom and they found his wife the queen and the queen was pregnant he was expecting a baby and the chief of the deva lord indra he wanted to kidnap her because he was scared that this son who is in the womb of the queen is going to be as bad as demoniac as the father but narada muni who is a holy saint he was there also with the devata so he told lord indra don't worry please give them to me i will take care of them i will make sure that he will become a great devotee of the lord and he won't become a demoniac person like the father so lord indra agreed and narada muni took them and taken care of them and every day he will teach them all the good things from the scriptures what he knows about the lord and so when hiranyakashipu managed to find to found his wife to find his wife and 
bring the wife back and the son back to his kingdom. He put his son, the son's name is Pralat. So he put Pralat in a special school with all the uh, people from the kingdom and, and the royalties. They all went to that school and she wanted that the son also being taught by the teacher like him. So he is very good in uh, collecting wealth without considering of other people with any way. Can, he can use any other uh, way to become rich and powerful. But this little boy, Pralat, who got the teaching from Narada Muni, he, he didn't like that. He doesn't like uh, to earn like uh, richness without caring of other things. He's an honest boy and he doesn't like to fight. He doesn't like, because the teacher were teaching him, oh, these kind of people are your enemy. You have to hate them like that. And also, because Hiranya Kasipu was very, very powerful, you know what he did? He told everybody to worship him. He wanted to become God. So nobody else can worship God. Only he is God. So he was so proud. And one day, he called his son Pralat. Pralat. You come here, sit on my lap. I want to ask you something. Oh, my sweet boy, can you tell me? What did your teacher taught you? And Pralat, he was only five years old. He told, oh, my dear father, I learned that we always have to sing the glories of the Lord and remember of Lord Vishnu Narayan. We have to serve them, serve uh, Lord Vishnu very nicely. What? What did you say? Don't you know that Vishnu is my enemy? And he was so angry. Even Yakashipu called the teachers and asked them what? What have you been teaching? So I give you another chance. You teach him properly. Two teachers were so scared. They were, they were so worried. And they tried to teach Pralat all the bad things that they know that Pralat had to, had to learn. So, and then... Days pass, weeks, months. So I, Hiranya Kashipu thought, okay, maybe now he had learned. He had learned to become like me. Let me call him again. So again, he called Pralat to sit on his lap. He was so happy. So Pralat, how? What did the, your teacher have? Told you now. Yes, Father. I have learned that we have to always serve the Lord very nicely, and because Lord Narayan will become very happy if we serve Him. What? What? You are still talking about Vishnu and Narayan? And she was so angry that he pushed Pralat off his lap. He stood and said, he said to his soldiers, go, go and finish him because he is such a betrayal. So the soldiers, those who soldiers look very scary, they took him away, took Pralat away. Small little Pralat, only five years old. They tried to poke him with trident, with sword. But you know what? Pralat, 
she was so peaceful and calm. So he was just doing his prayers. Om Namo Narayana. He was just praying to Lord Narayan continuously. And because they were not successful, they tried something else. They put him in a pit with full of snakes. But then, still he was just doing his prayers. Om Namo Narayana. So, the snakes, the snakes never attack him. They put him under the feet of elephants. Do you think the elephant trampled for a lot? Whoa. Well, I don't think they will because Relic is still lost in his prayers, so the elephants won't really do. Nothing will actually really do anything to him. Yeah, so they tried many things and they were not successful. They were like, oh, what to do? What to do this with this boy? Okay, now they tried to throw him from the peak of a mountain. So they climb, climb, climb to the highest peak of a mountain and then they threw him off. Now you will be finished. But you know what happened? Suddenly, a hand he came and catch Prahlad. He was, do you know whose hands were there? Were those? Who's the hands of Lord Vishnu? If he's uh, Narayan's or something. Yes, Lord Narayan, Lord Vishnu's hand. Catch him. He caught him and put him safely to the ground. So the soldiers all reported to Hiranyakashipu, their king, that they were not successful. And he was so confused. Hiranyakashipu. Uh, I think uh, I think we have lost uh, Yahona because of uh, because of her her connection. We'll just wait for a few minutes to see if she's joining back. Okay, How many of you have heard the story of Prahlad? Show me, your, show, uh, show me your thumbs up if you've heard the story of Prahlad. Ah, so many of you already know the story. We have a quiz coming up at the end of the story. So I'm going to see how many of you really know the story. How many of you can how many of you can say Hiranyakashipu? Can you on your camera and uh, on your audio and say Hiranyakashipu? Hiranyakashipu. 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 
Okay, I'll call out one by one, and then you can see. I'll start with Kashi and Anja. Adna. <laughs> How about Ajna? You want to go for it? Okay, next is Niranjan. You want to try? Yes. Okay. okay. So Hiranya Kashipu, can you repeat after me? Lai Pare. Niranjan, we are, we are we are waiting for you to say it. Hiranya Kashipu. Hiranya. Kaship, Hiranya Kashipo. Ah, very good, very good. Okay, then is Devan? Yes, ma'am. Can you say, can you say Hiranya Kashipo? Hiranya Kashipo. Sorry, can you repeat that again? Hiranya Kashipo. Hiranya Kashipu. Kashipu. Yeah, Hiranya Kashipu was a demonic king and father of Prahlad. Okay, how about Mila? Do you want to say Hiranya Kashipu? Hiranya Kashipu. Oh, well done. How about Kanak? Um, oh, well done. What is this amazing background you have behind you, which is changing so often? Is that magic? It's a very, well, it's, it's a virtual background, actually, which you can get in video settings. Oh, it's very interesting. Niranjan also has some beautiful penguins behind him. Okay, that's great. How about you, Kalina? Do you want to do you want to try? Okay, Kalina, maybe it's very difficult for you. Who is this here? I can see one Suresh Kumar Bandari. Do you want to try Hiranya Kashipu? Hiranya Kashipu. Ah, very good, very good. How about you, Shaurya? Shaurya, do you want to try to say Hiranya Kashipu? Of course, you must be able to say that. Okay, there is I'm Johanna so has come back after the after the technical glitch. Yeah, I'm so sorry. So I'll yeah. be back soon. Then I'll yes. hand yeah, I'll hand over to you, Johanna. Thank you, thank you. So let's start again um, from from where we, where we left off. Okay. So um, what what had happened uh, earlier that um, Hiranya Kashipu, the king, couldn't hurt, couldn't harm um, Prahlad, right? So he was so so upset. He was thinking, "Wow, how is this possible? I am the most powerful person. How is it that?" That my son, who is just five years old, he is so powerful. From where he got his power? So he was like so worried. And the teachers, Prala teachers in the school, he was talking to Hiranya Kashipu. Oh, my dear, my dear king, don't, don't be so worried. Don't be so scared. Don't. It is fine. You know, you are very, very powerful king. You can uh, fight so powerful that even you lift your eyebrow, all the devotees are so scared. You can 
you can uh, fight with all the devatas without any fear. So don't worry, nothing's gonna happen. Just be calm. So he he was trying to calm himself, and then okay, yes, you are right. Prahlad is just a small boy. So he just let let it be what had happened. And then time passed, and the teacher reported to Hiranyakashipu that actually Prahlad has been teaching them also about Lord Vishnu and Lord Narayan to his school friend. So, do you think Hiranyakashipu is going to be happy with this? No. Um, no. Lord Vishnu is his enemy. For him, is he doesn't like Lord Vishnu at all. Because he's so envious of Lord Vishnu. So, he was so angry. And he called for a lot again to see him. Mom, what about Shiva? Well, at, at this at this time, our Lord Shiva was not there, but he will appear later on. So, and then what happened? That uh, Pralad went to meet his father. Although his father was trying to harm him with so many ways, Pralad, he's a very nice boy. He is still very respectful. Yes, father. You call someone. Yes, Prahlad. I heard that you have been teaching your friends about Lord Vishnu. Why are you teaching about him? You know he is my enemy. But now I want to ask you. Why is it? Where is your power come from? Where does it come from? How come you're so powerful? Oh, father, the same personality who gave me this power is the same as the one who gives you your power, Lord Narayan himself. What? Again, you're saying about this Narayan Vishnu? Then, okay, bring him, bring him to me. I want to see. Where, where is he? Is he going, is he, is he here? Yes, Father. Lord Vishnu is everywhere. It's all around us. What? Now can you show me? Is he in this pillar? Yes, Father. He is also in the pillar. <laughs> can you prove me? Can you prove it to me? Okay, now I will hit this pillar and I will, we will see whether your Lord Vishnu is there inside the pillar. And because he is so strong and powerful, he struck the pillar, boom, with one strike and suddenly, boom, Lord Narasimha Day came out of that pillar. Hiranyakabhisipu was so shocked. He knows. He knew that there's nothing inside that pillar. He built that pillar on his own. So where does this Lord Narasimhadev came from? He was so shocked. And Lord Narasimhadev was so big. He, he's so tall and he, his head reached up to the sky. He appeared. and half lion so the top part is the lion body and, and harm blood so they fought they fought very vigorously they fought and you know you remember what did uh, Hiranyakashipu asked Lord Brahma to be fulfilled. 
that he cannot be killed by any weapon, right? Not outside, not inside, not data. So that he, is even smarter than him. He cannot be tricked with such a kind or by any. So Hiranya Kashipu and then was finished. He was finished by Lord Nishinadev with his sharp nails. No weapon, sharp nails. And Lord Nishinadev was not an animal, was not a human, and was not a deity. And he was not killed outside the building or inside the building. He was in between. And that was, at that time, it was not night and it was not day also. So how amazing the Lord created this so that he cannot be uh, fooled by such a cunning thing. And then, Prahlad, a simple small boy who had a strong faith, he was saved by the Lord because of his strong faith on the Lord. So that's, that's our story, first story. <laughs> so, um, well, because of the short glitch just now, we are a little bit uh, behind time. So, um, would you like to share another story? A simple short like, story? What, like, do you want, like, are you saying that you're going to tell us this, another story? Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Okay. Okay, this, this story also uh, is about a small boy also. A simple small boy. So um, he lived in India and he lived in a small village. He lived with his mother because his father um, passed away when he was very young. So they were very, very poor. They live in a small house and when it's already time for the, uh, for the small boy to go to school, the mother told him that she, she won't be able to take him to school because she has to go to work. Because she didn't work, then they will have no money to eat. But the thing is, for him to go to school, he has to pass a forest. He walk, had to walk past a forest. So the mother said, okay, uh, let's ask um, your dada's help. You know, if you go to the forest, you just call for him. Dinabandu dada! You call him like that. So this is a Bengali word. I, I, any of you bang, uh, come from Bengal? Do you know Bengali? No? Okay. So, uh, Dina Bandu, Dina Bandu means a friend of the distress. Distress means like somebody who is needing help. So, Dina Bandu means a friend of the distress. And Dada means, do you know Dada, what Dada means? Big brother. Dad. Big brother. Yeah. So Dina Bandu Dada means the big brother who is a friend of uh, somebody who is needing help. Yeah. So the mother said, okay, my son, when you go to the forest, when you're going to school, just call, call for your Dina Bandu Dada. So being a very obedient boy, he when he was going to school, when he reached the forest, he called, Dina Bandu Dada! Dina Bandu Dada! Can you call with me together? Bandu Bandu Dada! Dina Bandu Dada! Dina Bandu Dada! Yes. Yeah. Niranjan, you want to try also? Dina Bandu Dada! <laughs> okay, so he is calling and calling 
and then appeared a young handsome boy. Oh, my little brother, how can I help you? Oh, Dinabandu Dada, my mother said that you will help me to bring me to school because I walk in the forest on my own. Oh, my little brother, okay, let's go. So Dinabandu Dada took him. They went, walk in the forest, and when they reached out of the forest, uh, he left. And the boy continued to school, which is just near from the forest. So every day, he will go to school like that. He will call his Dina Bandu Dada and he will reach school happily and joining the school. And also, when he is coming back from school, also he will call his Dina Bandu Dada. And one day, in school, the teacher told, Oh, children, we are going to have a festival. So I hope that every one of you can bring something to the school. So can, uh, can you tell me what can you bring? One person in the class say, Oh, teacher, I will bring a few sacks of rice. And another, another boy said, oh, teacher, I will bring a few sacks of fruits. And another said, I will bring boxes, boxes of milk. I will bring uh, sacks of sugar. So many telling this and that, this and that. But this boy, he is very, very poor. Even to eat every day is already so difficult. So how can he bring anything to school? So he told his teacher that he couldn't bring anything. The teacher said, but everybody is bringing something. So I also hope you can bring something. So worried what to do. He felt so bad. And he told his mother, Mommy, the teacher told to bring something for the festival. Everybody's bringing something. What can we bring? The mother and she is so worried. I'm sorry, my son, but we don't have anything to give. Even for ourselves, we, we are already finding very difficult. Okay, I know. Why don't you ask your Dina Bandu Dada? I'm sure he will help. Ah, yes, mommy, that's a good idea. I, I will ask, I will ask Dada. So the next day, when he was going to school, he called for Dina Bandu, his Dina Bandu Dada. Dina Bandu Dada! Dina Bandu Dada! That Young, handsome boy came out. Yes, my little brother. So, are you ready going to go to school now? Yes, Dada. But today I have something to ask you. My teacher asked me to bring something to school for the festival. I don't, I don't have anything to bring. Can you help me? My mom said that if I ask you, you will help me. Um, well, your mother is right. Um, let me see. What can you bring? Okay. Ah, why don't you bring this pot of yogurt? You bring this for your teacher. Thank you. Thank you, Dina Bandu Dada. I can bring something to school now. So he was so happy that he got something to, to bring to school for the festival. But you know what? It is just a small pot of yogurt. It's like your drinking cup like that. It's just that small. But he was so happy that he can bring something at least. 
So he was so happy. He went to school, and then he told his teacher, "Teacher, teacher, I brought something." And so he gave the small pot of yogurt. And then the teacher received it. Oh, what do you mean this for the festival? This small pot of yogurt for everybody in the school. Yes, teacher. That's the only thing I have. My dear Bandu brother said that it will be sufficient. Oh, this small pot. Okay. Okay. Never mind. Okay, you go. You go. Ah, yeah. This boy. How is this? Small pot of yogurt. He wants this to be distributed to all. The students and the teachers in the school. How is this? And but you know what happened when he put the yogurt for and when he distributed the yogurt during the festival, he put little by little by little so everybody can got at least at least maybe ten people can get some yogurt. Not everybody, but at least ten people. Twenty people, thirty people, fifty people, hundred people. Hey, how come this pot of yogurt is still full? Again, one more, two more. Ah, oh, this yogurt is so magical. How come? The yoga is always full to the top, he never finished, and he distributed to all the students and all the teachers. But it is still full. And he called the boy. Oh, a boy! Oh, where did you get this? Oh, you know, it's just some interesting thing about this boy. Oh, teacher, I got it from my dinner bandu daya. Can you bring? Can you bring him? Can you bring me to him? I want to see him also. So that day, the boy took his teacher to the forest, and he was calling for his Dina Bandu Dada. Dina Bandu Dada. Dina Bandu Dada. But his Dina Bandu Dada never came. He was calling and calling. He never came. So the teacher got tired of waiting. He said, "Okay, never mind. I think I know. I know what happened. Okay, you better go back home, and I will also go back home." So when the teacher left, suddenly that young, handsome boy with the peacock feather on his head came out again. Hi, my little brother. Are you ready to go home? Yes, yes, Dada. I thought you never come. Well, I just come for you. Special for you. A simple cutting box. So, and then they went back, and the teacher realized that this Zina Bandu Dada, the big brother of this small boy, is none other than. The Lord, Supreme Lord Krishna. So that well, our talk for today. Yes, Kanan, you're saying something. Well, I actually sort of guess that um that when when I heard the word peacock feather, um I actually sort of. Thought it was Krishna because Krishna always has a peacock feather. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you know that, right? Very nice. So, um, those are the two stories, uh, for today. Then, um, we were going to have like uh, some 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 other activity after this, maybe some quiz or something else. Um, so I will um uh, just pass to. Yeah, so for Viva to to continue from here. Nice meeting so you all. all.
Thank you. Thank you, Johanna. So let me ask you all how much of the story you understood and let me see how much you remember. I have a quiz for you. Just, just let me know if you can see my screen. Who can see my screen? Yeah, I can see. Okay. You have to submit it now. Yeah. Now, what is the name of the last part? Who can answer this? Those who can answer can put your hands up. Show a thumbs up. I can answer. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, I can see. I think it's Hiranya. Hiranya Kashipu. Yeah. Right answer. Right answer, Kanak. Okay, I'll go to the next question. Okay, another interesting question. Who taught Prahlad when he was still in his mother's womb? Who remembers the story? Thriving through traditional yoga, but thriving through is like the also. So who taught Prahlad when he was still in his mother's womb? Do you remember the story? Who came and took Prahlad's mother to a different place to teach her all the nice things about Mahavishnu? No, I, I don't see. Oh, sorry. Yeah, who said that? I did. Okay, Kashi. Kashi, right answer. Yes. <laughs> Narada Muni is the right answer to the second question. Let me move on to the third one. Why was Hiranyakashipu so angry with Prahlad? Because, uh, oh, um, because Prahlad um, was teaching his friends about Lord Vishnu and the Lord and stuff. You, you have to choose one of these, A, B, or oh, C. Is it because Prahlad C. never went to school? C, no, C, because Prahlad said that Lord Vishnu is the Supreme Lord. Okay. How about you, Mila? Uh, you think it's A or B or C? C. Okay. Niranjan, how about you? Your answer? C. Okay, why am, why am I not able to hear you? You can unmute yourself when you want to answer. Okay, right answer all of you because Hiranya Kashipu was very angry with Prahlad because Prahlad always used to say Lord Vishnu's name. And because Prahlad said that Lord Vishnu is the Supreme Lord, not Hiranyakashipu. Okay, let me see who can get the next answer. Who caught Prahlad when he was throwing his on the top? Okay, who uh, caught Prahlad when he was thrown from the top of a mountain? Uh, it was Lord, Lord Vishnu. Lord Shiva. Lord Vishnu. Lord Shiva. How about you? How about you, Kashi and uh, Adna? Are you on mute? How do you know I'm gonna on mute? <laughs> You already answered B, Mila. Okay, Mila is B. How about you, Kanna? Um, I think it was uh, Lord Shiva. 
Lord Shiva. Okay, Kanak says Lord Shiva. Niranjan, what about you? Lord Shiva, Lord Vishnu. Make up your mind, Lord Shiva or Lord Vishnu? Lord Vishnu. Okay. Who else is there? Who else wants to take a chance? So let's see what the right answer is. The right answer is Lord Vishnu. Okay, let's move on to the next question. In what form did Lord Narasimha Dev appear? As a half man, half lion, as a dwarf, or as a giant fish? Who can answer this? Um, I think it was half man, half lion. Okay, Kanak sees half man, half lion. How about you, Mila? Half man, half lion. Okay, that's great. Niranjan? Man, half lion. Okay, everybody has the same answer here. Okay. The right answer is half man, half lion. Well done. Well done, all of you. Okay, Lord Narasimha Dev came out from the wall or from a door or from the pillar. A pillar. pillar. Who said that? Who yeah. said that? Kanak, uh, okay. Okay, Mila, what about you? Where did he come out from? Door. From the door, okay. Niranjan? From a pillar. Pillar. How about Suresh Kumar Bhandari? Yes, ma'am. Do you want to take a go on this? Who, uh, do you know the right answer? A door. A door. Okay. Mila and Suresh Kumar Bhandari says the door. And we have Kanak Niranjan say the pillar. Let's see whose answer is right. It's the pillar. So if you heard the story, Hiranyakashipu, he took his gadha and he hit on the pillar. And who came out from the pillar? Lord Narasimha Dev. So the right answer is pillar. Yes, Mila. I thought, I thought this guy said to Lord Brahma that 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 Narasimha would kill him, that no one can kill him outside or inside. Ah, that's also the right answer. That's the right answer for the, the question, which is where did Hiranya, where did Narasimha Dev kill Hiranyakashipu? So for that, you can say the door. But here the question is, where did Narasimha Dev come from? From where did he come out? That's from the pillar. Okay? Now let's move on to the last and final question. What are the characteristics of Prahalad? Was he respectful and gentle? Was he cruel and mean? Was he playful and disrespectful? He was uh, respectful. Okay, Kanak has taken a go. How about you, Mila? Respectful and gentle. Okay, and Piranjan? Respectful and gentle. And Suresh Kumar Bandari? I didn't hear you, darling. Say again. Okay. All of you have got the right answer. 
respectful and gentle. So that brings us to the end of the storytelling program. So you heard two stories. Can anyone tell me which are the two stories? One is of Prahla and one is of Deena Bandhu Dada. So next time when you are in any trouble, do you know whom to call? Call for Deena Bandhu Dada. He may come and help you. And who is Deena Bandhu Dada? Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna. Okay, wonderful. So well done to all of you for taking part in the storytelling and the quiz. And we'll see you again next time. Bye, all of you. Bye. Bye, Kanak. Bye, Mila. Bye, Niranjan. Bye, Bye. Sujit Kumar.